Hello and welcome back to GWN Games Plays Mass Effect! Ah, uh, this time we are going to be talking to all our crewmates, see if they have anything to tell us. I did not anticipate how much of this game was going to be me sitting here quietly listening to dialogue. But there's going to be quite a bit of that this episode, and then hopefully next episode we'll get into action. How you doing, Kate? Awkward turn! Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. Okay, that's basically code week? for I don't have I anything see how we to tell you. Any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other alliance ship could. Yeah, okay. So that was brief. We'll talk another time, Commander. This might not actually take that long, which would be nice. And like I said, we've already talked to Dr. Chakwas. Ashley's no longer up here. She's down in the cargo hold. And I'll see you on the other side of the elevator. You know, I don't know why so many teammates decided to make the cargo hold their home, but they certainly did. Ah, uh, sure. Let's talk to Rex. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. Thanks, Rex. What can I do for you? You gonna tell What's me anything? Story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogan live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. So yeah, uh, spread out. None of us are Krogan were stay exceptionally virile system. and did not have spacefaring technology when the Turians found them. Lots of species have left um, their homes and prospered. There was a big war. But they go to and the worlds. Turians, along with the Salarians, came settlers. up with a mutation that made warriors. them breed a lot slower so they couldn't fight the battle as so well. We leave. Hire ourselves out. And now they're and kind of, of prone to infighting. What can you tell me about the Genophage? And they're killing each other the and Solarians they're not breeding enough. Details. So their the species it. is slowly dying out. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? Because they're not the really great scientists. You saw a Krogan scientist? Exactly. You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. So long, Rex. Shepard. That's the sad story of the Krogans. Uh, I have to think about who I want to be my permanent team members. I suppose for now we'll equip Garrus and Rex. Oh, we haven't equipped ourselves for that matter. Uh, I don't care about those. I already have a better pistol and a better sniper rifle. Did I get any armor? No. But we have some for Garrus. Uh, what about like modifiers? <clears throat> that probably isn't necessary on a sniper rifle. Um, I 
I'll take the shield. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. He apparently can't wear medium armor yet. That's, uh, some skills you have to unlock in, um... <clears throat> in, uh... Their ability points sp spread. Alright. <clears throat> Definitely a better choice for him. We'll give the shotgun to Rex. Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Okay. Sure. And Rex. Ready has the same. That's all the same. I forgot to do that for Garrus. There we go. Okay. Now we'll talk Commander. to Commander. Do you have a few minutes to talk one on one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. Okay, so. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. What's your opinion? So basically, you have to check in between. Uh, Kind of wish you Story got missions. Sooner, no offense. To see if they have I more to say. The rescue. I just wish. You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, sir. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. Did we? I think we did this conversation. Okay. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, when she Chief. first got sir. on the ship. So I'm gonna skip there. Basically, she regrets people dying. My teammates die. So Thanks guys. for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hated it. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's hey. why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without Good. CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not bad. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. All right, and let's sell looking all for our supplies. Junk. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Uh, buy back. Okay. Here's here's what we want. Okay. All right. That should get that done. And one last person to talk to. We're only nine minutes in. We're telling. There she is. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. Oh yeah. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance well, was so Well, it was advanced. kind of a collaboration. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. Yeah, most quarians do. It comes do. with being a quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. 
I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. The Quarians are one of the more interesting species in the Mass Resources Effect world. are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies really on the not others that many. for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government? The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Well, I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. This is interesting. Important backstory. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any AI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. Yeah, but one thing we not. underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So, the Geth share brain power? Kind of a hive mind. Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in a group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. What made them rebel? As 
as we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Yeah. What did you do? It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. You can't blame yeah. them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope Sounds was good that most theory. of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Basically, I already said that. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Oh, I want to talk about something else. Like what? Like goodbye! <laughs> See you later. Oh, that was convenient. Hey, Commander. You can't you know be able to talk to me? Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Uh... We'll save that for some Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. So, we leveled up. Let's see here. I don't really want stasis to last longer, which is all that really happens. Um, because you can't shoot at people. However, singularity, I think I do. So we'll add some to that. Okay, let's go head up on a mission. I think we spent enough time dawdling down here. I'll see you up by the galaxy map. Oh, right. Welcome to the galaxy map. This is how we do all of our navigating. So. Um, there are pretty much, uh, side quests in all these areas. All of them have planets to explore, and we're gonna do all of that. Obviously, I'm gonna do a lot of cutting down. Um, I don't know if we'll get to see the Mako today? I think we might. Um, but you will soon see that it is, uh, terrible to drive. And so, um, I'm going to be cutting out most of that traveling on planets. My idea is to completely explore a planet, <clears throat> uh, showing, cutting to anything relevant that happens, and then at the end of exploring a planet, show the planet map 
to show where all the things are so that if you're playing along, you can follow. Uh, okay. I don't remember which system it's in. If I hit pause and go to Liara's thing in the journal. Artemis Tau Cluster. Is that... that's super generic, right? Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't tell us which of the... the other places we need to go. So we're just gonna have to physically go there. To see if that's where the mission is. I suppose maybe that's part of it. Um, but I think you actually have to visit the places, the planets, to um, to see if the mission's there. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, um, most systems like this have one planet you can travel to, and two you can scan for materials. And sometimes they have uh, things in the asteroid belt, so you want to just do it like that. There we go. You want to uh, just kind of scan your thing around until maybe something comes up, and then you can survey it. That's a side quest thing, and we're done. That's as quick as it goes. Um, on planets, you can go and it'll be like, oh, nope, we can't land there. And so then I usually go from inside to out just so that I am Commander, systematic. I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Okay. Say anything about the automated distress beacon? No. Um... So this is the planet we can travel to, just for sake of uh, showing you what everything else looks like. Can't scan or do anything, so you just have to look at each place. Yeah, see, I can survey this. I didn't even... I just clicked out too quickly to even see what I got there. Doesn't really matter. Rare element. Okay, so... This, um, if you're going for the achievement in which you finish most of the game with a single, uh, character, it is going to be important to gain that character as soon as you can, as well as to do all these missions. Um, just how it goes. Uh, so, we did lots of talking on the ship, especially with Tali, um, uh, next time I think we're gonna try and find... Liara, I have a feeling she's not on this planet, but we'll we'll uh, show you the Mako and drive around, and I'll do with the first of my little um, map exploration things. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.